in welcoming Dr. Bauman Zahori. Thank you, sir. Okay, hold on, Dr. Zahori. What's my mic? You don't have him mic'd? Evidently, you are not Mike, so you will have to have All right. Okay. Sounds good. Everybody can hear me now? All right. <laughs> Again, my name is Baman Zahuri. I came from California yesterday, and thank you so much for Dr. Greer and company inviting me to this meeting. And I'm here to learn some knowledge from the rest of you guys. That's how I start my uh, statement and uh, my talk old saying, uh, knowledge is power. And uh, this is where I learned that knowledge from the rest of you guys to see what's going on around me. Although I'm continuously studying, keeping update with the technology, which always think I'm behind of it. So saying that knowledge is power, we go to uh, aspect of uh, knowledge is power, I see it as a two dimension space. One being knowledge, the other one being power that we're going to have. However, adding to this uh, perspective of two dimensions, there are two other dimensions that you require to have that power in order to gain that knowledge or knowledge to gain that power. And that is, you know, for us to know the knowledge, we need known stuff as information. And with that information, we gain that knowledge. However, to have that information, what we need is data. Without data, you don't have any information. And without information, you don't have any knowledge. And without knowledge, you don't have the power you're looking for. So I looked at it as a four-dimensional space. If you're looking at Euclidean space or four-dimensional or Cartesian space, that's how I uh, see that perspective. Anyway, one of the ideas that I'm going to present here, uh, I am myself as a scientist, firm believer of UFO, but since I haven't seen it and I don't have that data in me, therefore I don't have that information to relay and have the knowledge and power to express what's all about. But I am firm believer of it because I believe our galaxy is not just us. There are going to be some other folks with better knowledge, better information and better technology. Uh, although we are on edge of learning more and more technology with artificial systems that is coming, why I call it, by the way, artificial systems, is there are two other components of it known as machine learning and deep learning, and without those two subsystems, AI wouldn't exist by itself. So the knowledge that I'm going to bring with me to, to you guys is known as a scalar wave, and I don't know how... Uh, familiar uh, some of you folks are with the scalar wave, but is a new approach of physics, which is some sort of a out of traditional understanding of physics, particularly this wave as a scalar wave is a sort of a contradicting Maxwell equation to me is not contradicting. It's a complement to Maxwell equation. So out of uh, 26 Maxwell equations that exist, he reduced it to total of four, and one of them happened to be Ampere Maxwell equations that scalar rate can be driven from it. And uh, uh, there was a book that I wrote, and it was there. And you saw that the first slide. Describing all the waves in different perspective uh, and uh, understand any differences between each is presented in this PowerPoint presentation. And I am not going to go through all reading stuff about it, but some of the wave we are known like a wind, like droplet into the water, creating wave. Those are typical scenario that we facing each day and we are observing. Next slide, please. And radio wave, X-rays, and uh, other kind of a wave that we are familiar with, it, such as microwave, infrared, they're all well known and we know it. None of these things are in a characteristic of a scalar wave, but is very similar behavior 
as it comes to electromagnetic wave and understanding of wave from both Maxwell and electromagnetic field and also electrodynamic that we are facing describing these waves. Next, please. In the vector versus a scalar that most of the waves are in a vector form, a scalar, as it says, quantity or phenomena that exhibited, exhibits magnitude only, typically a numerical value. And uh, based on no specific direction when it comes to mass, volume, speed, time, and energy density or example of scalars that is different than other waves that we are familiar with. Next, please. This is a typical wave that characteristic of it shows, and we are all familiar with it and easily can be solved by a simple partial differential equation, not getting too fancy in mathematics. But in general, that's how you can solve it. There is an amplitude, there is a crest, and there is a motion to it uh, that can describe a wave. Next, please. A mechanical wave, as you can see, has a, some sort of a longitudinal wave as well as also transverse wave, uh, uh, transverse wave that we can easily plot it and see it on any oscilloscope machine. Next, please. Example of mechanical waves are similarly, you can see it is depicted and you can see there are really nothing uh, extraordinary information about them. We all familiar with it. Next, please. Sound wave that is broken here by F18 and has a nice uh, uh, sound barrier broken by this fighter. That's a good example of, again, longitudinal and typical sound barrier that we breaking during uh, supersonic speed that we can break with airplane. Electromagnetic wave that is also a presentation of present ampere Maxwell equation that we are familiar with versus how we can solve this equation in order to demonstrate a scalar wave and give a meaning to it. Next, please. These are typical uh, boundary of the waves from radio all the way to gamma rays that each one has have their own spectrum that you can see and plot it here and depict it as well uh, going forward. Next, please. Again, more aspect of it. Next, please. Matter waves that we are familiar and also uh, developed by folks like Einstein and uh, uh, shows uh, what kind of a wave you are looking at, that uh, hot, cooling, laser beam, and so forth, so on, other scientists that dis describe with it, and we can see typical aspect of it here as well. Next, please. Now it comes to a scalar wave. The father of the scalar wave is nobody except Nikola Tesla with his patents and some of the ideas he had. However, from aspect of presenting this beyond just example that you typically uh, see in his depiction in his laboratory, uh, he didn't have the right equation to present his scalar wave, but he had enough experimental uh, demonstration that showed us a scalar wave is different than Hergian wave that we are aware of it, like those other waves that I showed you at the beginning of the slides. His wave is energy wave. And that's where a scalar wave comes from. And some of the uh, comments and claim that this guy did, uh, brilliant scientist, and we also claiming is a complementary to Maxwell equation and presents what a scalar wave is all about, where the difference between Hergian and a scalar wave come to play. Next, please. This is a typical pat pattern that he showed and demonstrate that. And some of these things you find today in a lot of places like YouTube with a lot of ideas people present. And of course, there are a lot of hocus pocus behind their ideas that doesn't mean anything, but they demonstrate they have a scalar bot. But this is a typical pattern of his that he presented a scalar wave and uh, uh, showed it to the world. And one of the claim he had, pay attention to that, he said, it's a wave that can travel 1.5 times the speed of light, not the speed of sound, okay? 
that's where the problem starts happening. People objecting. They're saying theory of uh, relativity does not allow go faster than the speed of light. Yeah, possibly. But that's our existing knowledge. But is there any other knowledge that we have to know and information that we have to gather? And what can say about it? And recently, about a month ago, I heard uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory measured such a wave at 1.3 times the speed of light, which was very interesting to me. And of course, the one Russian scientist na named Trongov showed this wave from the bottom of the reactor, light water reactor, and he measured it at 1.3. And also I came across with another scientist. When I started writing that book of mine about the scalar wave, which is by the way, the only book exists so far that I know, uh, I claim this also goes beyond the speed of light. He demonstrated that at Los Alamos, and he presented in University of New Mexico about four years ago that I was lucky to listen to his presentation at the source of the beam he created from his antenna that he built at Los Alamos. He measured it at 1.3. So we both agreed that we are on the same path. So he demonstrated theory, uh, experimentally, and I demonstrated mathematically and from the theory perspective. Next, please. This is one phenomenon that the scalar wave can be used in a weaponry system, and we can utilize it in a, a very nasty sort of a weapon system, and it's called big eye or interferometry, which is technology that two scalar beam can be used as a defense mechanism as well as also as a uh, very aggressive weaponry system in a directed type of energy weapon, if you are interested in that arena. However, a scalar wave also has been demonstrated and can be shown uh, within certain frequency can penetrate going to water and communicate underwater that allows our submarine warfare group people not to surface from the depth to certain level in order to stick their antenna to communicate with their headquarters, rather communicate while they are underwater. And also same for similar folks or uh, other folks demonstrated at certain uh, frequency below eight gigahertz, this wave can be used as a technique uh, for treating Alzheimer or Depression, I haven't done that because I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not uh, licensed to do some testing, but theory at least logically shows there exists such a thing that we can do it, okay? Because th these days a lot of ECTs are used treating depression, which is very invasive approach versus using a scalar wave at that frequency below eight gigahertz is a very non-invasive solution approaching something known as transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS that exists and a lot of folks are talking about it. And of course, it's not approved by FDA, but I can see at the Stanford, a lot of folks showing that demonstration and treating their patient rather than using ECT, they are using TMS, which is a good approach if we can utilize uh, a scalar wave. Because one of the beauty about a scalar wave is Nothing stops traveling of this wave, not even Faraday cage, because we know Hergian wave can be stopped by Faraday cage and uh, not by uh, a scalar wave. And we can talk about it and some of opinion I have personally based on observation we have seen. Next page, please. So in a simple form, a scalar wave is a wave that is not presented by any coordination system and not related to direction and dimension. So it's not traveling really just in a Euclidean space, in a propagates through the time dimension, such as Minkowski space, which is in simple terms, curvature space that we're traveling. And that's possibly also justifies how the UFOs or extraterrestrial objects are going to us from galaxies far away that we measured by distance of uh, light, 10,000 light 
distance. That's how they travel and coming, not in a straight forward direction, but in a, some sort of a curvature or a Minkowski space to come and visit us. That's one justification we can uh, justify that traveling because as we know, traveling to the space is a lot of uh, objection or objectives to it that we have to really overcome and be able to measure to pass certain resistance such as air resistance and frictions and things like that. And this can be defined and driven by something known as quantum electrodynamic versus classical electrodynamic. So next please. Can you go to next please? Is it? Okay. A scalar wave, as I said, is a store energy information outside of uh, our three-dimensional space because they propagate through time dimension, but uh, their energy can be released in our three-dimensional space. The scalar waves are nonlinear or non-Hergian waves, as I call it is energy waves, and that have the ability to carry information. There has been some speculation that the scalar waves can also occur naturally in nature, like our in our DNA, although there are some claims by some German scientists that is a good treatment of uh, some diseases, which is not really uh, proven. So some of them, I look at it uh, with some sort of a doubt in it, and I don't go beyond just, just that they have measured DNA might be generated through DNA, so, I mean, a scalar rate through DNA situation. To verif ver verify, I personally don't have any experience. Next one, please. Characteristics of a scalar wave, they form a non-local potential energy. A scalar waves also carry information and they have a uh, fractal structure. Such waves do not decay over time and distance because they're longitudinal. And a scalar waves are store energy and information in dimension out of our three dimension space. That might be one of the reasons propulsion system of some of these UFOs uh, might be depending on such a technology. That's just an idea. And I personally don't have any experience. I haven't done any study in that area, but that is the only justification I can justify physics, uh, from physics perspective and science perspective. That's how they fly. Because the clips I have seen in some cases on CNN or other news, the way those extraterrestrial uh, objects are flying, definitely violating all kind of a conservation of law that we are familiar with, such as uh, conservation of mass, momentum, and particularly energy. The way they move, their move is definitely is out of our knowledge of understanding of uh, classical mechanical engineering or uh, quantum mechanical engineering. So that's a possibility that they fly like that. Energy of a scalar wave can be released by closing the circuit in our 3D space and allows us to travel in Minkowski or curvature space to the, uh, shorten the distances between two points. Next, please. Travel faster than the speed of light. That is definitely not known. Uh, at least two national laboratories prove that. Theory of uh, my calculation based on what you see in my book that you saw at the beginning of the slide, if you read through it with 2,524 equation in it, I proved that case is doable. And uh, cause the molecular structure of water become coherently reordered due to the penetration it has. And as I claimed in this case, scalar wave cannot be stopped by anything even Faraday cage that most waves, millimeter wave, microwave, and all kind of a spectrum of uh, energy and wave that can be stopped, a scalar wave can penetrate through micro, uh, through Faraday cage. And our, our involvement, uh, one of the characteristics is that also involved in the formation of process in nature. That's why also we can penetrate through the salt water and be able to communicate under certain pressure and depth of water in the ocean and that's why for warfare communities such as submarines 
such as a special operation folks that are going underwater, uh, they can communicate using spe specific antenna design for their application to the communication and penetrate through salt water. Next, please. This is a typical scenario of Minkowski space that, a space that we can imagine and show through the quantum electrodynamic and be able to draw it and going from past light cone to the future and be able to travel in this space and cover the two distances at a shorter time. Next, please. Recent experiments on the scalar wave around 2001 experiments were conducted by Professor Constantin uh, Christian Meyer. He's a German guy who also claimed the uh, DNA aspect of it. That's where the problem comes in and uh, takes credibility away from him. But uh, when you're reading his book, you have to give him the credit that he discovered experimentally by presenting it this through his instrumentation that he built. He has cases that easily can be purchased. And I bought one of them uh, about five years ago well, while I was at John Professor of, uh, uh, at the University of New Mexico and be able to bought one of them and really present it that you could read it on oscilloscope, such a way. Next one, please. That is a typical instrumentation he built. I'm not advocating this instrumentation. I just bought it for purpose of what he's claiming based on those two coils that original patent of Tesla had it. And sure enough, it shows something, but needed more funding, which uh, I got a huge resistance from uh, university not to do these sort of things in their laboratories or laboratories that I had. So it is what it is. There's nothing that you can do uh, unless folks believe in it then they get behind you to support you, just fighting up the hill battle because you're saying, hey, is a violation of theory of Einstein going faster than the speed of light. When Einstein uh, expressed his theory, he was going against Newton laws, okay? But yet we accepted it. So there might be other re reason behind it. That's the book I'm talking about. I'm not advertising my book because this book is not available. <laughs> openly in the market, simply Springer who published it and sold a lot of it, pulled it out of the market with no reason. <laughs> so, but there's still some copy of it are out there. And if you can't find it, reach out to me, I'll send you the PDF of it. I don't care about my copyright or their copyright. It's mine, I wrote it, I'll give it to any whoever wants it. Yet they are selling it amazingly. <laughs> but they say we pulled it out of market. Okay, fine. <laughs> Next one, please. Next slide. Okay. A scalar wave application. As I mentioned, a scalar wave, from my perspective, has three applications that I can put my hand on it and back it up with my equation and uh, science of physics and mathematics. If anybody has any challenge, prove it I'm wrong because, from my perspective, two plus two, if it is equal four, then this equation so shows that fact that you go and derive some form of a uh, equation that is different than Hergian characteristic of equation and uh, travels at one over r rather than one over r square. If you look at differential equation of or partial differential equation of Hergian wave, it is relationship with the distance is r square at the bottom, reverse of r square. In a scalar wave, is one over r. Simply by taking simple maxwell ampere equation and do simple vector analysis on it again not going fancy but prove my case you can see that a scalar wave as a secondary complementary solution to maxwell equation so i'm not challenging maxwell per se that he's wrong i'm just saying he possibly knew it but ignored it to make his equation very simple or he didn't know about it or he didn't know how to derive it which i doubt it I mean, Maxwell equations are very well-known equations, and they are very famous, and everybody uses it on, from day to day or our life. So I'm not denying that as a physicist myself, but as a complementary to his equation, a scalar wave exists, and you can easily prove it through the mathematics and science of physics behind it. The three applications that I see in a scalar wave, as I mentioned, if 
is below certain uh, frequencies such as 8 gigahertz easily can be used for treatment of any depression, Alzheimer, and so forth, so on. And easily can be used for PTSD, particularly in case of all these remotely piloted uh, uh, personnel that Air Force has, and they they losing them through the depression because they see attack of their events uh, very quickly uh, at the last minute that hits the target. The other one is underwater communication. If this scalar wave is uh, below 60 gigahertz, can be used as a communication means, and above it can be used as a uh, weapon, and easily can be used. And one of the things that we might be running out of time, or so I'm going to cut through some of these slides quickly. The events of uh, uh, Cuban uh, folks uh, or uh, Department of Energy folks or diplomat that got sick is based on a scalar wave. Uh, although everybody else is claiming that is a microwave, microwave cannot penetrate two walls, concrete, and so forth, so on. Has to be a scalar wave that goes through Faraday cage even. So even you want to send a microwave or millimeter wave, you need a huge antenna and infrastructure to propagate this wave. However, a scalar wave does not require such a thing. A simple antenna built on a space a scalar wave technology that uh, the scientist uh, uh, John uh, uh, showed at Los Alamos can be miniaturized very easily and be used for that purpose, okay? And also a scalar wave can travel uh, beyond any technology that laser offers when it comes to high energy weaponry system or high energy directed weapons. A scalar wave has a different characteristic that can go through particularly intraprometer technology and attack. And is also is a good countermeasure against hypervelocity objects coming at us because for us to travel at 15 times the speed of sound, you need to break through atmosphere molecules. And for that, you need to have a big plasma in front of objects to be able to travel and overcome the friction that you have in front of you. And a scalar wave can in inter, uh, in interface these things and attack them and utilizing AI systems be able to uh, pinpoint the target coming at you through this interferometry technology and be able to attack them particularly if they're coming at cruise mode rather than uh, uh, ballistic or uh, hyper type uh, approach that they have. So a scalar wave has a lot of application, as I said, and that's the third application and something our defense companies got to look at it and be able to defend against hypervelocity objects coming in. And a scalar wave also penetrates through any weak plasma that these objects creating in front of themselves to travel within uh, air and not having any friction and be able to reach that speed. However, if you send a high power antenna to detect them, first of all, by the time you detect them, it's no longer there, it's gone. Uh, secondly, uh, they get absorbed by uh, that weak plasma or d by shield or plasma shield that they have uh, in front of them and uh, help them to even enhance their speed faster. Yet a scalar wave bounces back and brings new information to you and says what's going on with that object and you can tackle it. We can go quickly through these slides so they can see it. This is a typical scenario that has been shown by uh, Tesla, and uh, if you look at the shape that is his hand drawing versus the next slide that can be used as a, a sort of a strategic defense initiative scenario, you can see the similarity between this and the next piece, slide, please, if you go. Next slide. One more, please. One more. I'm going to go through this and let you guys. One more, please. Uh, this one uh, is a scenario that suggests a scalar wave can be used for treating PTSD and depression. That's the sort of a configuration I came up with, and I even applied for a patent to obtain that instrument sitting behind this lady in the picture that can be used 
dealing with transcoronial magnetic stimulation to uh, treat depression. Take the slide, please. One more, more. Okay, these are typical hypervelocity curvature that we can see that the uh, uh, propulsion system we have in our arsenal allow, uh, allows us to go to scramjet and be able to deal with some of those black program when it comes to airplanes that our previous speaker talked about. But this is as far as we can go, a scramjet. That doesn't justify uh, how these extra thresh uh, uh objects are flying to our environment. Because if you measure into distance with the speed of light, uh, then uh, none of this propulsion system justifies their traveling. They gotta have other technology to travel and come to us. And definitely when it comes to our atmosphere, how they break that scenario of friction and not generating enough heat to melt them down and what kind of a technology or methodology they are using from nanotechnology perspective to resist the heat that we're generating. Our technology doesn't really justify their move either. Next slide, please. This is a typical hypersonic velocity that you can see. And as you can see, the heat generating in front of them can be overcome by having this a weak plasma around them and uh, be able to uh, travel at that uh, velocity of 10 or 15 times speed of lo uh, sound and 15 mark or 5 mark or whatever mark they're traveling at. And next one, please. These are typical scenarios of that. Uh, I'll leave these details on the uh, internet that connects to this conference and you do your own study. I just put it in PowerPoint presentation. Next one, please. Next one, next one. And these are all physics behind all those hypersonic velocity stuff uh, that uh, if defense folks within this group are involved, they have interest in it. They can look at it, that's all my observation. I don't know what's out there. I don't have access to them, so I don't know. Next one, please. And next one. This is again another scenario of interferometer technology that can be used and go against uh, uh, these measures coming at hypervelocity with a countermeasure such as that, that can be discussed in more detail. More, next one, please. Next. And next. Next one, please. These are typical things was shown by other uh, uh, previous speaker and some of this technology that traveling can be encountered by a scalar wave and go as a defense uh, against uh, the systems like that. Next one, please. And next one. Next one. Again, these are all based on how you can uh, set up a scenario to encounter these incoming measures as a counter against them and using a scalar potential by traveling one over R rather than R squared, as I explained it, one over R squared versus Hergian wave and energy wave. Next one, please. Again, these are typical scenario that shows longitudinal uh, electromagnetic wave inter interferometry and uh, techniques that you can put together in order to defend and uh, this come incoming hypervelocity objects toward us. Next one, please. And next, I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. Remember this picture. This picture uh, was taken in 1974 with a satellite uh, reconnaissance uh, called KH-11, which was a CIA satellite at that time. First time I saw this thing uh, was 1974 when I was involved in uh, SDI. And almost I'm there, just one minute, please finish that. And Compare this picture with the one Tesla had, and you can see a similarity between the, these, yet our industry claimed this is a uh, ground-based laser, which is not the case at all, because ground-based laser has a lot of issues, so, such as thermal blooming, that cannot really perform uh, and do what this picture shows. This is very similar to what Tesla was talking about, and it's a scalar wave technology that they built it in 1974. There is a lot of evidence about that. We can talk about what I'm running out of time. And I see the signal from our speaker. Thank you very much.